The American Egyptian Women of Influence podcast aims to be the American Egyptian culture podcast of choice. We believe that our knowledge and our participants' stories will greatly enhance understanding of both cultures. I'm Karen Leggett Abouraya. Monica Talib is the newest winner of the Arab American Book Award for her young adult novel, I Was Their American Dream, a graphic memoir. Monica is the author and illustrator of this graphic novel about growing up as a Filipina Egyptian American. Her mother is from the Philippines, her father from Egypt. But her career is very wide ranging, including organizing digital events for the Malala Fund, the One Campaign Grassroots Advocacy Organization, and developing an independent food magazine called The Runcible Spoon. Currently, she is deputy editor of NPR's global health and development blog, Goats and Soda. Welcome, Malika. Glad to have you here. Thank you so much, Karen, for having me. Now, of course, with, with an ending like that at the beginning, Goats and Soda, I need to ask, where did that title come from for a blog? Our blog covers international affairs, and we thought it would be clever to name it after something that you would find in every country in the world, except for Antarctica, which is goats and soda. So we thought it was fitting, and it also gets to our, a little bit of a sense of humor. <laughs> what is, now you've got your memoir, I Was There, American Dream, a graphic memoir. What prompted you to, to put your story into a book and into a graphic memoir? That's a really great question. I, um... You know, I grew up in a really diverse part of California where um, in my high school, uh, the majority of the people who were there were Asians, Hispanic people, um, and when I grew up and moved to the East Coast, I was really startled by how little diversity there was, and I think that I learned how, it was almost like a culture shock, frankly, all the people who I thought, I thought that that people, that, that the East Coast would be like California, where everybody would be, you know, Asian and Hispanic too, and I, I don't know why I thought that. Anyway, I, I wrote the book because for the most part of my life, I thought that most Americans were pretty cool about race, and then when 2016 happened, there was a lot of really ugly rhetoric around immigrants and people of color. I mean, during 9-11, I had heard, I was 14, so I was pretty young. And um, I know that there was a lot of anti-Muslim sentiment then, but in 2016, I was more of an adult and more aware of what I was hearing, and I was shocked by what I was hearing, that um, Asians were taking people's jobs, um, you know, Hispanic people were, you know, bad hombres, um, Arabs were terrorists, and, like, it just didn't match the way that I grew up in, with my family in California, it was very loving, and um, very multicultural, and I wish I just wanted to show people and tell that that story. I didn't see it being represented, and so I wanted to tell the story from my point of view of what it was like to grow up in a multicultural household. Maybe help break stereotypes about what um, what the media at the time was repeating about what people were saying about. Now you decided to illustrate it yourself. Was that a debate, or did you know as soon as you started, well, of course, I can draw, so I'm going to do this this way? Well, you know, I, I often think of it as um, poet likes to express themselves through poetry. Uh, an essay, yes, an essay is like to express themselves through essays. And for me, ever since I was a kid, when I, when I tried to, to explain something about my life, I would doodle myself reacting, you know, like, I am so mad! And I would draw a picture of myself, um, you know, with steam coming out of my ears. And that was the way that I, I expressed myself best, you know? So it was no question I was going to draw this book. What's been the reaction to your memoir, especially from Filipinos and Egyptians? You know what? It's been so awesome. It's been like the most gratifying thing that I could ever imagine. I, I had no idea whether people would like it, whether people would to it. I just heard from so many people. Um, Filipinos can't believe that the food that they eat is represented in a book or, you know, that there were also titos and titas, uncles and aunts, and, and nanas and tatas, grandmothers and grandfathers represented in the book. And in the Egypt section, people who, uh, a lot of Egyptians travel back to Egypt to 
summer and can totally relate to just being in so many aspects from like your parents being super proud that you're American to going to an Arab wedding. Uh, it's just, it's, it's awesome to hear that people look at even themselves in my book. You might have been one of the few to take a skateboard back. Oh gosh, yeah. I, was, I think I was just trying to show off at that point. Um, and there's no way to skateboard in Egypt anyways because it's so dusty. Like You were just going to get your wheels dusted up. That's what I learned. There's no smooth sidewalks either. <laughs> California, you found it hard to answer the question, what are you? Perhaps because of the book or through the book or unrelated to the book, have you become more comfortable with who you are now? Right. When, you, when you're growing up in California. Absolutely, yeah. I think, that, I think that the biggest thing for me was that I never felt qualified to call myself a real American for the longest time because I was, I had, because of my ethnicity, like, because I wasn't a white American, I didn't think it, I could actually claim my Americanness. But through the book, it's, it's like just a few words in this statement, I am American too. Writing is about discovery and going through the process of writing the book helped make me believe those words. It's one thing to say those words, but then to believe them is an entirely different thing. And writing the book helped me realize that. So when I say that I'm Filipino Egyptian American, like I one hundred percent believe that I am all of those things equally represented. It it took a really, really long time for me to absorb that. Your career has focused on managing and organizing social media. So let's talk just for a minute about that. Is all the digital communication that has exploded in recent years, and perhaps especially now during the pandemic, is that a curse or a blessing for our global society? I have actually found um, social media to be a really beautiful place sometimes. I think that um, Twitter and Instagram well, Twitter can be really polarizing, and the news can be really negative, and can really get you down emotionally, but it's also a place where you can find really uplifting stories about people, where you can connect. Um, for example, I'm moving to Nashville in a, few, in a few days, and one of the first things I did was I turned to Twitter and asked the Twitter community, um, I, you know, I'm a Filipino American, are there any... Are there any restaurants or bookstores or any, any types of establishments owned by um, poor color which I can go and support? And I have received dozens and dozens of responses from people all over Twitter are sharing um, their recommendations, welcoming me to Nashville, and I've already made enough friends to organize like a socially distant meetup. Excellent. Have you got another book underway? I am actually working on a book. Um, I don't want to speak too much of it because I, I don't think it's going to, um, I'm a little worried about it at this point. Writing is a very hard process, but um, it would be exclusively about my summers. In the we'll look forward to that. And we yeah. wish you well with your move to Nashville, and uh, we'll keep reading uh, Goats and Soda. Thank and anything you. else you enjoy, writing and drawing. Thank you very much, Malika. Thank you.